after there what type of sentences are used what type of uh, different uh, figures of speech and parts of speech are used by writers all these are written on a page and when we are new criticism mean that we are just going to analyze words on page we are not going to keep in mind the historical background of the poem historical background of the writer or historical background of the characters no we are not going to concentrate upon those things those things are not very much important according to new criticism because said that they say that this form is very important these words on page are very important so new criticism mean that only and only text is very much important and this new historicism is against this process of close reading because in close reading we are just uh, we are going to negate context or history of that piece of literature and new historicism says that no we will have to keep in mind canonical as well as non canonical books literary as well as other non literary books and so this is against this is its concern against close reading then stress on historical context because its name is historicism so it is stresses upon historical context historical context means whatever is going to happen or whatever has happened in history that is historical context the politics of the past the religions of the past and the tensions of the past then economic systems of the past moralities of the past values culture norms societies and civilizations of the past these are all are the part of a context so these are given uh, st these are stressed upon then cultural history what is uh, culture culture means way of living and thinking of people is called culture and when people live and think and behave in a uh, certain manner start it starts going to uh, come into existence culture and that moves with the passage of time and that's called cultural history then art reflects values of culture culture mean culture is a judicious combination of different things culture is not just one thing it is a combination of different norms values and so many things so it reflects according to new criticism it reflects the values of the culture now this is a term which is called self-fashioning this was uh, also used by stephen great blood self-fashioning mean that when we uh, study or we go through the plays of shakespeare or we go through the plays of marlowe at that time we can think that what were the reasons what were the social conditions what were the political conditions what were the familial conditions what were the economic conditions and what were overall conditions of the society which molded the personality of this writer in such a way that he uh, wrote this play it mean that there is something behind that so all these things which are part of this process this is uh, called self fashioning because there were uh, certain factors which were responsible in molding the uh, personality of a poet a dramatist a novelist a short story writer when these things are going to mold the personality of a writer it means this is called self fashioning self fashioning it means that there are certain factors mean different factors are responsible in for molding the personality of that person so this is called self fashioning it means there were certain factors which were responsible in molding the personality of shakespeare then there were also certain factors which molded the personality of other novelists dramatists and short story writers so in new stoicism this is also given importance that what were those factors which helped in the self fashioning of that person that he or she became in such he started behaving in that manner then uh, non canonical non canonical mean that uh, all other books which are not form of drama novel short story or poetry they are called non canonical they can be about politics about religion about eco economics about norms and values about cultures but they are also given importance and when they are given importance and they are studied in a parallel manner this is called new historicism then uh, cultural poetics it is also called cultural uh, cultural poetics because uh, it is the reason behind this saying cultural poetics is that it is a perhaps a new way of understanding the culture of the past then representation representation of past values representation of past different things from the past then history uh, its different aspects and uh, here in new uh, historicism the concept of history is 
that it is not just one thing which is going to make history there are so many things which are molding history so many people are contributing so many systems are contributing in the construction of history so many institutions so many norms and values it means that so many things are contributing in making history and when these different things are making it mean that history has different aspects and when it has different aspects we are going to reshape it and we are going to take or we are going to understand it by keeping in mind that it has different aspects then uh, concept of materialism history and culture and uh, these new critics say uh, the people who are concerned with new historicism they say that this history is a material then culture is a material both things are materials and they uh, they mold the background of a work it means that there is something in these things which mold the personality which help in the molding of a personality in such a such a manner that a, he st starts writing a thing in his or her own uh, special way then and the last and this is also most important that what is difference between <coughs> old historicism and new historicism when well, old historicism is this is uh, usually hierarchical hierarchical means that it mo it is moving from one step to the other and to the third and from position a to the b and b to the c c to the z and then it means that this is just a movement and we just uh, when we are to uh, understand a piece of literature we will have to just keep in mind uh, this history old history that what happened this and that but in new criticism or in new historicism we are going to read literary books in a parallel manner with non uh, non literary books mean there is a parallel reading here just just representation of uh, uh, past and here we, they are going to uh, keep them in a balanced manner in a parallel manner and then they are going to study so that we may understand what was actually happening at that time then it is uh, old historicism is called that it is a historical movement and this is a historicist movement what is meant by historical movement it means that it, it creates an historical framework in which a text is placed that in any, any society that creates historical framework structure and we are going to replace that piece of literature in that and then we are going to understand but in this there is new criticism there is something different it is interested in history as representation in written documents and here it is treated as a text it means that if literature drama is a text novel is a text short story is a text piece of literature is a text it means that at the same time books on history books on uh, books on uh, politics books on religion books on science books on economics means all those are also a part of there are also texts so this is the difference between this and this one and then uh, the third one is that the, the word of the past replaces the word of the past the word of the past replaces that is replaced there by the word of the past and here it represents a new reality to resituate history it means that we are going to uh, take history from the past but we are going to resituate it we are going to rejuvenate it we are going to give it some new dimensions here is just representation of the past we are there we are going to give it new dimension uh, resituate it means so that we may understand it in a good manner and then we may continue to uh, practice in future then uh, literature expresses status quo status mean it as it is most of the literature uh, in old uh, parts or with as old historicism is concerned mean that literature expresses status quo as it is conditions as they uh, it observes it writes but here it mean that literature can change course of history if it is not in the position to change the course of the past of the history it can uh, even co change the uh, coming future of history now whereas this new historicism is concerned it's also called culture politics and it is uh, coined by stephen greenblatt and it is a method of reading uh, canonical along with non canonical books and the most important thing with new historicism is that actually its purpose was that when uh, we are to understand different pieces of literature we have to understand a drama novel a short story or poetry at the same time we must also give preference to non canonical books other books which are were written being written at that time we must also give importance to them also and only then we can know that what were the factors uh, other than literature which were responsible for molding the personality of the person the thinking pattern of the person the ideology of a person in certain man certain manner that he has written this poetry this 
drama, this novel, or this short story because there are always factors, and those factors are called uh, social factors, and that is called the context. And context means that those factors are also there; they are helping in molding the personality of a person. And when these factors are joined together, only then a writer can become uh, in the position to write something. So this is all about new stratagem when uh, canonical and non-canonical literary, literary and non-literary books are. Uh, study together so that we may thoroughly understand them the real meanings of the text and what will be the advantage of it the its advantage will be that it will very much help us in order to fold mold our future in a beautiful manner